Hello, we are going to make a short video on some audacity recording and editing techniques just to get you warmed up and feeling settled into the really simple software that sometimes can feel a bit intimidating. Um, audacity, uh, there is a lot of little things in audacity that we don't need to use. So we're just going to go over the super basics of making a quality audio book. Um, with maybe you're using a Nell's recording kit or maybe you're using your own microphone. It doesn't matter, it's the same stuff. So uh, let's get going. I'm gonna share my screen with you and jump straight over to Audacity. And just get rid of these from my last project. All right, so here we have a nice clean Audacity slate. <laughs> uh, the first thing we want to do is make sure that our microphone is um, is what is being recorded as opposed to recording um, from the computer microphone or from another microphone, you, you know, uh, if you had something else like the Zoom audio device, these are our options. So you press the little arrows to the right of the section that has the microphone symbol on it and pick whatever it is, is the name of your microphone. So my microphone is called the AT2020 USB plus. So I'm gonna click that. Over here, we have a little speaker symbol and that is um, where you can choose where the sound comes out. So you might be using your headphone, headphones plugged into the headphone output of your computer or like me, you might have a headphone output from your microphone. So. For me, I'm choosing again the AT2020 Plus, um, but your op the options that you have will, will pop up here in the um, in the option drop down. Okay, so now that we have that chosen, we're just going to look down in the bottom left hand corner, and there we have a project rate choice. Let's make sure that we have that chosen at 44100. That's our sample rate. Uh, and let's open up a track to record on. So in audiobooks, we generally record in mono because it's a little bit smaller and it's just a single sound being the voice. So we don't need a, we don't need the stereo panning. Um, and let's go ahead and title that track. So just on the audio track drop down here, you can just pick name. And the first thing that we're going to record for an audiobook is probably the front cover. So I'll just call it front cover. And here we have our track. Now we want to make sure that the level going into the software is correct. So you probably remember from the other training videos that the level we're looking for is around, is averaging at around between the minus 23 to minus 18 kind of bracket. Um, and our peak levels, so that's like the, the hottest kind of tapping points of our recording level can go all the way up to minus three, but not beyond that. Um, if we go up to zero, that's the absolute max. And if we go beyond zero, um, that's when it starts to distort. So we want to give ourselves a little bit of what's called headroom, a little bit of space there. So we've got that three dBs of space. So to actually get a look at the level that's going in here, we click the microphone over here and press start monitoring. Now I can suddenly hear my voice. And in fact, I can hear it in a little bit of delay because I'm hearing both the sound of my voice going into the microphone and also the sound of my voice coming back from the computer. So there's just a slight digital delay there. You may have the option on your microphone to switch to just listening to microphone or just listening to computer. I'm gonna to switch to just microphone so that it's nice and clean for me. So here you can see the level going in is actually pretty good. It is like hovering around the minus 18. And if I say something kind of enthusiastic, like, hey, over there, I, got, I think I got up to about minus two. So let's just tuck it down a little bit more. Where we can adjust that input level is on this little minus plus here. If you hover over it, it says recording volume. So we can just drop that down a little bit. This one's going to 0 0.6. Now there isn't a perfect there. That depends on um, the microphone. It depends on your voice at what level that's gonna be. What is the same is the metering. You wanna make sure that you're metering at a level that is averaging at minus 18. So somewhere between the minus 24, minus 12, and then peaking. So when you're getting, doing your P's, you see it gave me a little red line there. Duh! That little red line there is on minus one. Hey, over there! 
So that little line that just stays there for a moment is telling you where that peak went to. So you can make sure you have it in the right spot for your voice and your microphone. So it went a little bit higher than what I'd like. So I'm just going to drop it down a tiny bit more to give myself a bit more headroom. And uh, I think that's that's looking pretty good. I'm averaging around here. If I get a bit enthusiastic, I'm heading up to about, hey, hey, I'm only heading up to about minus six, um, which I think is pretty good. And just beyond there, there we go. We went up to minus four. So I like that. I like that average um, level. Over here where there's this little speaker symbol that is showing you the just the level of what's coming out to your headphones that's just the volume essentially it doesn't affect the recording at all you can see if I go all the way down my metering here on the left stays exactly the same it just adjusts what's coming out all right so we don't need to worry about that except for what feels comfortable for you so always do your metering on the left first and your metering on the right second Okay, so now we have our track ready. We have our microphone ready. Ready. We're in a nice position with our microphone. You should only be a few inches away from it to get that nice close recording. And we're ready to press record. I'll just grab a book. I've got my um, library app up here. Let's read a sample from... Um, white fragility okay so i'm actually doing the author's note just change that okay so i'm going to press <clears throat> take a breath in <sighs> press record author's note identity politics the United States was founded on the principle that all people are created equal. Yet the nation began with the attempted genocide of indigenous people and the theft of their land. American wealth was built in the labor of kidnapped and enslaved Africans and their descendants. Women were denied the right to vote until 1920 and black women were denied access to that right until 1965. The term identity politics refers to the focus on the barriers specific group. Okay. So I started stumbling there. I'm just going to press stop. This is normal. It's going to happen sometimes that you're going to get, especially if you haven't done a pre-read, um, which you're not obliged to do. Some people like to do it. Um, I don't tend to do it, which means I stumble a bit more. So now what you want to do is just with this little cursor here, drop back, have a listen. I have to slide my microphone over to computer to hear it. And find the place where you that you want to clip it off at so so the end of the sentence is um where black women were denied access to that right until 1965 let's check that again okay and so then i'm going to select from that point to the end delete my cursor is staying right at that point which is perfect and I start from the end of that sentence, breath in, breath out, record. The term identity politics refers to the focus on the barriers specific groups face in their struggle for equality. We have yet to achieve our founding principle, but any gains we have made thus far have come through identity politics. So that's good. Say that's the end of that chapter. I'm ready to go. Um, if I want to do any other editing, I can just jump to the front, have a listen back. Say at the beginning, you can hear my spit kind of moving around and I don't want to hear that anymore. I can just select it. Um, and then up here, see a little symbol that says silence audio selection. So that's just going to basically delete that audio, but keep the the space of the audio. So keep the seconds because we want to have that one second entrance before um, we hear the narration. So we don't want to just press delete like we did with the other part, but we want it to be silent. So I can go along and if there's any parts, whether it be um, errors or kind of noises we don't like too much, we can just silence them like that. 
um, don't get too fast for the nails recordings to get rid of all the breaths and things like as long as that stuff stays fairly quiet we're going to do that post-production at the end for you the the important um, part is that you have all of the narration in there that is understandable and clear for our readers and that we don't have your double up so if you end up recording something and then re-recording that sentence that we don't have both of those sentences in there you want to make sure you delete any of your any of your mistakes and just have the recordings that are good in each section okay so as you know when we're making audiobooks we record um we uh we record to files that are section by section so the author's note is going to be its own section so we're just we finish the section that's wonderful we're going to press file, export, export as mp3. We're going to title that, um, say it's the first section of the book, which it wouldn't be because you would have the title page and um, the front cover before that, but say it is. We're going to do 01 for the first section, author's note, mp3 files here. Check where you're saving it to to make sure it's in the same place. I've probably given you a Dropbox link so you can just go straight to your Dropbox to pop it in there. For me, I'm just going to pop it in my iCloud desktop. File type, type is mp3, constant bitrate mode and quality 192. So you can change all of these um, if it's not on the correct one. Force export to mono and save. Now here we're going to go into our uh, metadata. I had already entered this metadata um, when I was doing a tester video, but if I hadn't, it's just easy to change or it might be on a previous thing that you're working on. You just click on it, enter it in. Um, the track title in fact is author's note. Make sure that your track number is correct. You've got your year, you've got the genre as audiobook, and in the comments, we're going to write the publisher, colon, BC Libraries Cooperative, narrator, colon, your name. And okay, so now that is going to be exported, and you can move on to your next track. So we'll just go tracks, add new, mono track. And for the track that we had already worked on, we can just go ahead and mute that. If you've already finished editing it and you don't need to look at that anymore, you've exported the MP3, you're confident you have that file, you can actually just go ahead and delete that and just work on your next track here. Um, rename it. Let's say we're on chapter one now. Enter and keep moving ahead like that. Perhaps you feel a bit too nervous to do that. So you wanna keep all the tracks in there or perhaps you just wanna save, um, you know, if you have, if we jump back, cause because the audio software is awesome like this. Let's go file, edit, sorry, undo track remove, undo name change, undo track remove. And here we go back. We've got our original file here. Maybe we want to save that whole project, save project. And we can title that. So it's just reminding us this is a project, not an audio file. To get that MP3 audio file, you need to export, press OK. And then we can title that if we like, author's note. And uh, we have that project that we can go back into if we want to edit it later. You're going to end up with a lot of project files and a lot of MP3 files. If you go that route, you're welcome to do it. Um, personally, me, I like to keep it all in one project file and I would just save that as a white fragility, the name of the, the name of the book. And then I would keep adding my tracks as I go. The only problem with that is that it can end up being quite a big file um, and maybe it's a bit hard on your computer to open up that big file all the time so you've got to kind of work within what your computer and what your preferences are there's not a perfect way to do that um, uh, remember that if you do delete that and then you want to edit the mp3 that you exported already you can just go back and bring it in so you just go to import audio let's go to desktop and there's our file author's note mp3 open and it comes and we can edit it from there. Now that we're not going to be able to take back the edits that we already did because we're not in the project file, we're in the exported MP3. But if we did what we needed to do, we're confident in what we did and we might just want to look at it again later, we can work that way. Just export the MP3, bring it back into the project when you're ready to do a few more edits on it. That's it. That's the basics of Audacity. That's going to get you set up. That's going to get you doing the really simple edits that you need to do to make an audiobook. 
Uh, if you have any questions at all, you can always email me at pamela.hart uh, at bc.libraries.coop and I'm here for you. We can have a little video session or um, we can just chat about it. I can make you a little personalized video about any issues that you're having with the program or with your with your narration. Thank you so much. Have fun.